We are seeing reports, seeing pictures of retailers literally throwing away physical games because the sales are so bad. Yeah, the digital future is here. Digital is how people want to own their games in so many cases, but the last few weeks have really reminded everyone of the downsides. I mean, in the worst case, some Xbox fans have actually been scared that they could somehow lose their console library in a generation's time. I mean, at the very least, if disk drives are disappearing and a bunch of your game library is on disks and you kind of thought backwards compatibility was going to help you, well, yeah, I hope you held on to your Xbox One or your 360. Over in the land of Sony, they have literally deleted users' purchases with a combination of Crunchyroll and Funimation, and then we have cultural landmarks like Spec Ops The Line being delisted from sale on all platforms, meaning, well... Yeah, that game's just kind of dead and inaccessible to people unless they uh, go to other places in the internet or somehow find a physical disc from the past. The digital-only future is really the present now. We're seeing major new games only being digital, and that raises many, many questions as we go into the future. At the very least, things are changing. If physical media is a massive thing for you, then honestly, in some ways, it may be too late. But do you know what is not too late? Today's sponsor, which is right now. There ain't a sponsor, but you can still help us. Hitting the subscribe button essentially gives the algorithm a happy signal. It would really help me out if you subscribe to the channel. Most of our viewers actually aren't subscribed. It's just part of how YouTube works these days. But that gives the algorithm a happy signal, and that means it'll spread our content to more people, and that really helps. Same with the like button. Those things actually do make a dent. They're a great zero-cost way to support the show. It'll take three seconds, maybe five. My end of the bargain, of course, is I will bring my A game to this show, and I'll also bring my A game to supporting the team behind this show as best I can so that we can bring you the best news, the best research, that's our ambition. Thank you for your support, and let's go. Okay, I apologize for that sponsor segue. That was uh, certainly a bit cheesier than most. But anyway, story number one, Crunchyroll and Funimation. I'm going to do this really quickly. So Sony own both of them. They've combined them. And if you have a digital purchase on Funimation, then just rip you because you don't anymore. They are not going to be supported. And that means that uh, you're, you're just, you won't have access to them. They won't be in your library, which uh, yeah, no doubt has made many people feel fantastic about the purchases that they've made that have just disappeared appeared even though it's all just digital which feels very strange then of course we've got the extrapolation of all of the xbox console fears and i think just with all these stories we're seeing a anxiety in the air okay but how have we actually got here and that's where i want to go to some new games so hellblade 2 very anticipated game, looks terrific. And you're not going to own it physically because it's not going to be released physically. The same also happened for Alan Wake 2. Now in these two examples, something rather surprising has happened. They both have just cost here, in the UK anyway, 50 pounds, I believe $50 as well, rather than the full 70. So for once it actually seems that, uh, wow, the saving actually got passed on. To be honest, I don't really expect that to be the norm. That being said, I do have to wonder, is there an argument, right, for having a higher margin business by going digital only and then passing on at least some of that to your consumers in such a way that you have more day one sales because you have a more accessible price point, which would maybe mean you wouldn't have to rely on as deep discounts uh, into the future? I don't know, that's, uh, that's just a thought. But the point is, these games are not going to be coming out physically. Very, very clearly, both of the companies involved have ran the numbers. They've looked at doing these physically, and it's just not made any sense to do it that way. So, just go all digital, which for many of us is great. We'll just hit the download button at home, have our game, and that's all good. But what happens in 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? Looking at, as an example, Spec Ops The Line. In the best case, our digital libraries will exist forever. I mean, I don't think any of us predict Steam disappearing anytime soon, but I think there still is a fundamental anxiety that you don't own that thing on Steam. So even if it's just an erroneous Steam ban or account termination or whatever, the idea that you could lose a lot of what you have bought and I suppose feel like you own, that's kind of spooky to people. Now, of course, this is just the normal trend for indies and even like double A's, right? Or more independent games like say Baldur's Gate 3, you know, that was all digital until they, after the fact, did a collector's edition. So we're just seeing that the larger companies now, they don't feel like they need to, as much anyway, 
cater to that physical market. Now, I still think the biggest games out there, the absolute biggest franchises, and especially the sports games, you know, the likes of your NFL, your EA football club, or whatever the hell they call it now, I think those still will have physical releases because they do go out to that, like, very broad uh, audience. But if you just look through the financials of these companies, I mean, it's so goddamn clear. So let's start this off by taking a look at Square Enix, where you can basically see that in every single region, downloaded is way bigger than packaged. But as you move from 23 into 24 here, of course, this is going by fiscal years, well, you saw 4.95 million packaged, 11.48 million downloaded. That then changed. The next year, 4.19 million packaged, 14.32 million downloaded. So very clearly, the ratio of downloaded games is only getting larger and larger. Square Enix is one example. Looking at Electronic Arts, though, they're experiencing the same thing. And obviously, this is just what is going on everywhere. And this is a trend that is just getting faster and faster. And then we've got this that was pulled together by Ars Technica using NPD's data. Now, this only goes up to 2021. But what you very obviously see is the number of physical games is going down. The number of digital games is going up. Um, you know, 2020... 2021, obviously some uh, interesting things are going on around that time. But as you see, it's not just that, oh, there were lockdowns and things and people weren't going outside to buy physical games. If that was the case, would you see from the likes of EA and, uh, you know, and Square Enix that you're actually getting that digital number just increase and increase um, sort of even into the present day? So no, I think uh, physical truly is dying. And ultimately that's because I think of just convenience. We all, generally speaking, have better internet than we did five or ten years ago. So just, you know, hit the download button, get your game, play the damn thing. You don't need to go into the car, go into a shop, and all of that stuff. And that's kind of what gets us to retailers then. There's been a number of interesting stories that have happened over the last uh, little while about just physical retailers destroying game copies. So, here is one. I saw this memo earlier as well. Walmart will prep to remove Starfield Xbox physical copies from their store, but you could get very lucky and get it for three cents on Monday. Brackets, the memo says the system will block the purchase. But yes, this was essentially looking like Walmart were getting ready to sell Starfield for three cents or just destroy them all, which of course seemed pretty damn bizarre. And everybody immediately joked, oh, that's because Starfield isn't very good. It's now selling for three cents. That's similar to a lot of those very deep discounts we saw on Fallout 76 when clearly it was not shifting uh, copies. But in reality, while I think no doubt there's a bit of that, it's probably just the physical game's pipeline, right? Because what happens is store suppliers, they buy a large volume of games before release, and of course, then they sell those games at the recommended retail price. If those games do not sell, there are cases where a publisher might take them back, but very often it just ends up being like, well, you know, stock space. It's going to be on your shelves. It's going to be in your warehouse. you got to do something with the damn thing. Here, I suppose Walmart clearly felt like this was going to be a pretty big sales event. Maybe they were looking at past Bethesda games, Fallout, that kind of thing. But, um, well, you know, wasn't on PlayStation, was it? If there was a PlayStation copy of Starfield that could have been sold physically, I've got to imagine they would have sold some more of them. But as it stands, you're sitting there with physical copies, right? Physical copies for Xbox. I mean, the Series S, their volume play is digital only. So, um, yeah, that obviously didn't really work. There was another joke going around for Immortals of Avium, a, uh, bizarre game. So it, it's actually been selling for one pound. Uh, yeah, one pound at Asda. If you're in the States, that's like, what, a buck fifty maybe? Probably a bit less than a buck fifty. Uh, it was previously five pounds. So, um, you know, that's like a, a small sandwich. That's uh, not, not a lot of money for a game that I believe cost 135 million copies. So, um, yes, this is honestly beginning to feel a little bit like that story of all those E.T. cartridges buried in the desert, I think, in New Mexico, if memory serves. But as you dive into this, what's clear is a feedback loop, because who the hell is selling physical games? Yes, some places like Asda or Walmart or whatever still may have them, but well, here's one tweet. This is what my local Target's Xbox uh, area looks like. And you can basically see some like accessories and then just like physical, you know, like game codes, right? That you can buy. 
the sort of thing that I suppose maybe a grandparent puts into a birthday card for somebody. Like, that kind of thing. We've then been seeing reports, as here picked up by Video Games Chronicle, that some European retailers will just not be stocking physical Xbox games. And that does make a lot of sense. Like, physical PlayStation games? That makes sense. There are so many PlayStations. I mean, as an example, I think just in the recent year, they sold about 22.5 million PlayStation 5s, and I think 7.6 million Xboxes. And that just means why bother, especially when so much of Microsoft's strategy is very clearly going digital. Now, obviously it is that with Sony, right? I mean, they did have day one, a PS5 digital only edition, but at least uh, with Xbox, they're planning a mid-cycle refresh. I believe it's called Codename Brooklyn. Now that's supposed to be coming out at the end of this year. One of its headline things is actually having way more storage, but it doesn't have a disc drive, right? So just it flat out is the case that physical discs are kind of dying off. And I've got to be real, there's a side of this, and I know that mostly we're talking here about ownership and about game preservation. There is another side too. So way back in the day, you could have a DVD player. And one of the reasons why so many people purchased PlayStation 2s was because the PS2 would act as a DVD player. And indeed, there were people who bought PlayStation 3s, even though obviously the 360 won in that generation, but people who were buying PS3s because the PS3 could play Blu-rays and Blu-ray players were otherwise extremely expensive. Now, you see what happens if we all just start getting digital-only consoles. That means that fewer and fewer people will have a device under their TV that can play a Blu-ray. And that's really bad because that decreases the Blu-ray market size. Now, Recently, <laughs> uh, I, I, I purchased Dune. I purchased the 4K Blu-ray for Dune. Uh, watched it. Nice big TV. Looked fantastic. I mean, seriously goddamn fantastic. And then I saw that in the UK, Dune's on Netflix. So I just spun it up. Same TV, same circumstances. And, and yes, the supposed 4K on Netflix was shit. I mean, of course it was. Uh, between like Netflix, Amazon Prime, they are all trying to get away with as low of a bit rate as they physically can because they don't want to pay the costs associated with streaming that video. Whereas if you just buy a Blu-ray, guess what? You, you know, you will have a, a version of that movie that's like 50 gigs or 60 gigs or something crazy and every frame will look gorgeous and you'll have a way better viewing experience. So... Even as somebody who like really enjoys film, the notion that more and more people are just not going to have the option because the game console, which is basically the only thing nowadays they can put a disc into under their TV, well, because their game console can't use a Blu-ray, well, I guess that just means the Blu-ray market contracts. Meaning what? Meaning we're gonna be stuck with goddamn shitty streaming services that uh, just have awful bit rates. So getting back to things, that was an unplanned rant, but I think it does actually tie into this. Because if the consoles go, who's gonna buy a Blu-ray player, right? Oh, I don't know, that just worries me. Moving back to the stories though. So Matt Piscatella, you'll probably notice we talk about things he says a lot. That's just because he's a very experienced um, sort of sales side industry analyst. So he's been saying the physical software has been in slowish decline, but the rate of decline has accelerated in the last 12 months. And in the fourth quarter, it started to speed up even more. Digital game cards at retail had a very good Q4, particularly Roblox and Fortnite cards. So that's what physical games retail looks like now. It's about merch, it's about store credit, it's about V-Bucks. It's not really about selling copies of video games with boxes anymore. And I think what really sealed the deal for me was seeing that UK game retailer game has actually ceased doing pre-owned games. Now, the way that it was, was that pre-owned games were an absolutely ginormous part of these companies' businesses. The idea was you buy a game new and then you sell it back to them for barely any money and then they sell it to the next person for more money and they just get to pocket the difference. Of course, the game publisher, well, they only get paid for the one new sale because, you know, that disc was purchased from a distributor. It's very interesting then that what used to be a massive line of business for them is pretty much something they're getting out of now. So physical media is essentially in a death spiral. Publishers are not releasing physical copies. Retailers are not stocking them. Audiences aren't buying them. Audiences then value the disc drive less and it just goes on and on. 
And so physical media will, I think, rather soon die. Or at the very least, it'll be a niche thing where particularly premium games get to have collector's editions, basically for actual collectors, but the game bit doesn't really matter. So that's basically going to happen. And that means that games preservation is going to have to change. Games preservation obviously was a bit more okay because hey, that's the, that's the game disc. The, the, the bits aren't going to leave. They're on the disc. Or the same with cartridges, right? That's, that's different now. So we don't really know what this future is going to look like for game preservation. Not that anyone would want to, I don't know, pick up Anthem in 20 years, but there's lots of people who enjoy playing games from the, the late 90s, the early 2000s today. And there's even quite a market uh, growing, I mean, yes, for emulation handhelds, but also for handhelds that can just run a Game Boy cart. So what happens for the games of today? Because in the future, those games are not going to be worth that much money to the people who hold the licenses, right? I mean, they're basically going to be getting trickles of sales, not enough to care about, basically not enough to even bother with. To them, the games won't really matter at all, so probably they're not going to renew licenses or whatever. But for those of us who are interested in those games, well, we still do care. And that is going to mean more spec up the line situations where that's a game that you can't download anymore. So what the hell do we actually do about this? That is where things are actually, to be honest with you, quite hard. Now take uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, it now has a physical edition, but it's a physical edition that happened because the game was super successful and they did a big collector's edition box. That's like super awesome. I totally support that. Great. Uh, there's also the likes of limited run games. So limited run, you may not have heard of them, but basically if there's like an indie game that's really done well, that the idea of doing uh, something with limited run, a physical edition, of your game, maybe a collector's edition. That's just really, like as a developer, that's just cool, right? That's like a, a thing to do out of love for your product, out of uh, out of passion. It's not really something that's about preservation and it's mostly something done for the people who are the biggest fans of your games. I mean, for the people who buy games via limited run, I would imagine the percentage of them that already own the game is basically very, very high. So physical is basically going to be for the collectors. It'll be like what vinyl records are to people who love music, right? Something that is there so that you can get a special edition of of a record that you really care about, that you can store in your home and just be sort of happy with, right? A collector's thing, but not preservation. The question then is what's digital preservation going to look like? In a way, less structured, but I think in another way, well, once people end up cracking things, it's pretty much going to be there forever. But ultimately that is the problem, that these games need to be cracked for them to be preservable. And I think that is basically a problem. Uh, it's actually one shown off quite well by a recent issue that GOG had. So GOG, obviously, they do DRM-free games. They will also sell some games that uh, are not DRM-free. Now, they recently had some outage. They tweeted about it, and they also said, in the meantime, please enjoy the DRM-free games that you've already downloaded. No constant internet connection is necessary. That's the sort of thing that, I mean, just sounds like it should be. The idea that a service goes down, now there's a game that's literally sitting on your computer that you cannot access. Yet that is a problem that uh, now we actually face on our PCs and on our consoles. Now, in this case, GOG did have to remove Spec Ops the line because that was down to uh, a licensing issue. So it's not like digital preservation is going to solve that kind of thing, at least if you're relying on a big storefront. And essentially what it means now is, as I see it, cracking and piracy is currently the only way that we're, we're getting preservation. And it's not like the cracking and the piracy is happening in service of preservation. It's just, it's a digital file, right? It's like, you know, as soon as something goes in the internet, you can't delete it it will just spread, right, you know, peer to peer. As long as a few hundred people have it on their computer uh, across the world, it can end up in a torrent and then you can probably get it. But for preservation, I don't think we want to rely on just grabbing random torrents. I mean, that's that's not great. It's also something that could very easily, well, just, you know, lead to scams, right? Lead to malware, all of those problems. So certainly I think that GOG is, is definitely on the right path, but there's a reckoning that's coming and we have in no way dealt with it. And that's what these recent stories have essentially told us. Uh, you know, be it people worrying about their digital Xbox library, maybe worrying about the whole Crunchyroll situation. 
there's there's some there's some fear there. And then of course, even the transferability of libraries, that's an interesting thing in itself, where your PS5 stuff will probably translate into your PS6. And that's going to mean that when the next console generation comes, because Sony are so entrenched right now, Oh, it's still going to be extremely hard for Microsoft to crack that, uh, you know, crack into that big walled garden and steal some of those fans. So we really end today's video in a situation that's rough, where games preservation in one way is amazing because of piracy. So it's basically a, a sort of accident of games piracy, but an actual structured way of games being preserved that does not exist unless people make a deal with maybe GOG and actually put the work in, but who's the guarantee that that will happen? So I suppose my question to you then is this, what do we do about this? What the hell do we do? I mean, it's not like a game's gonna be 10 years old and then it's just going to go onto the big library. You know, the, the literal library where the whole internet decides, ah, no, this is the library, all the government's funded, and that's where you can go and just take out one video game at a time for the sake of preservation. Like, how the hell does that actually work? And then the other side of that, my, my, my 4K Blu-rays. People are going to get digital consoles. I mean, the next wave of Xboxes and Playstations, there's a very high chance there will be, you know, there'll be no disk drive. Or maybe they, they won't even do a, you know, a purchasable disk drive. And then, well, it's like the default effect. The idea that, um, you know, in the USA, uh, organ donation, you know, for like car crashes and stuff, that is opt-in in the USA. And it means that a very small or a relatively small amount of people have actually opted in. But if you poll people in the US, they're largely, vastly in favor for opting into, uh, you know, or having, you know, the organ donation, something they would want to do. But because the default is that you are opted out and have to opt in, you just get way less of it. So if physical media ends up being something where you've got to buy an additional thing for your console, which is rapidly becoming the new normal, well, what does that mean for your 4K Blu-ray? What does that mean for film? Oh man, this actually does impact a lot of things and certainly after just enjoying that dune 4k i mean i'm i'm not going to use a streaming service if i have it you know if at all possible i'll value having that 4k blu-ray having that physical media i can just pop it in and enjoy it and you know as close to perfect quality as is possible <sighs> yeah there's there's just so many downsides i suppose of like physical media being impossible because you literally don't have a device that will accept. I mean, who the hell knows? Well, you end up in a situation where you buy a 4K Blu-ray and it also has a tiny thumb drive with a USB-C on it so you can put it into your PlayStation X and Xbox to, uh, you know, to watch your movie that way. Is that going to be the only way that they can actually give us, you know, like f physical media for, for film? because no one will have something that uses a bloody disc. Ah, okay, enough rambling about this one. TLDR, your game library is uh, basically just what do you have access to in a database and uh, that could actually change. People are not, uh, people are not going to be using physical media as much, including for film. And I think that is really sad. And I think it could almost lead to a degradation in quality standards from people, which uh, would really suck. But that is it for today's video. Let me know what you think about these stories. I'll catch you next time.